Come with him if you want to live. Adam Carolla. Yeah, get it on. Got to get it on. No choice. I got a mandate. You get it on. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for telling a friend. We love that about you, right, Gina Grant? That's right. And Ball Brian. Spazzing on that ass. Oh, boy. All right. Lots of stuff to get into today. Let's see. I wrote some stuff down here. Um, this weird uh, thought as I was watching the last of the Mohicans? movie stars. Oh, uh, yeah, oh the, uh, movie. Paul Newman. Yeah, Joanne Woodward. Yeah. It's called The Last Movie Stars? <clears throat> the Last Movie Stars. I think, I think. Yeah. Yes. Um, I was watching that series, Six Parter, HBO Max. Interesting. Um, so I had, there were, they did a whole part on Butch and Sundance. And I realized I was trying to I was trying to transport myself back into into that time, which is I always thought Robert Redford was this great looking dude, but I didn't think Paul Newman was a great looking dude. But then I you see all the pictures of him from back in the day, and you go, man, that guy was great looking. <laughs> and then um, you go, oh. And it's mentioned all throughout, like, oh, look at this guy. Looks like a Greek god, you know, blah, blah, blah. And so I, I was like watching it, and I was going, why didn't I see that when I was 10? I don't know, Butch and Sundance, 1974, 72? Yeah, I'll go earlier. Yeah, earlier. 72 ish. So Redford. No, 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 60. No, it's not better. I don't think it was in the 60s. Chris, I'm say 70. Chris will find it, or so someone will find it. Redford's. Like glaringly conventional hotness, sort of yeah. eclipsed Paul Newman. Well, he had a rugged good look. Sixty nine. Kind of, Sixty nine. Wow. Boom. At released in sixty nine, huh? Interesting. He had a rugged good look that kind of transcended, you know. Um, I assume age, or you know, you could recognize that right away. It's like, oh, that's a handsome fella. He's rugged and tough. Are we on, on Newman or Redford, Redford now? Yeah. Redford, whereas Newman, I think, had more of a subtle, timeless. You know what I mean? Like you yeah. mentioned the Greek thing. Yeah, they, were, they, were they were both hot. I mean, <laughs> you go back and look at pictures of both of them. They're both arguably two of the better looking guys in Hollywood at the time and, and, and remained. But I was looking at it. You know, they're showing parts from The Sting mm -hmm. and parts of Butch and Sundance. And I was like, well, how come I never thought that guy was good looking and every, every, everyone else it's did? A failing yeah, part. but I was gay for... Redford. 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 Sure, sure. Right. And then I realized it was the time in this country's history where we were so caught up with hair mm. and that as a Brillo headed kid from the valley, long the long blonde mm -hmm. hair just hanging. Whiskey, sure. And and then I start thinking, I don't know what the hairstyles were in eighteen seventy two. Because <laughs> hard to say. In movies, you can watch the Elvis sixties version of it, and that's pomade and slick mm -hmm. slick back. That's a sixties haircut. And then you get to the late sixties and you see Redford had long like shaggy. blonde, shaggy hair, which would have been fine. From today was that from just after the civil war <laughs> I, I i i don't know because all i've seen is parts where first off the hair they had then would have been perfectly acceptable now yeah. but it's funny they had the sideburns going which were kind of a 60s 70s mm -hmm. thing unclear whether guys from that era had sideburns the mustache always kind of ubiquitous mm. but i really i was thinking like i guess i need to see photographs mm from that that era but anyway i realized that i dreamt nay long oh. for blonde straight hair that i could flip back sure. and feather and throw around and you know, leaf garretson kind of way. Uh, yes me. yes <laughs> that <clears throat> that I didn't even think Newman was good looking because he had the thicker hair that was more like mine right he had a drier Kind Curly. of a mop. Uh, it was like it was kind of the dry look. It was essentially my haircut, and my my self esteem was so low that I'm like two of the best looking guys in the world. I'd eliminated one of them as being attractive because he had hair that was sort of like mine. Okay, Groucho Marx. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, how could he be hot? Right. He's got the same hair I got. He ever I'm so not slightly hot. resembles an element of me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. 
Wow. Now, there's a different version of that story where I decide he's the hotter one because he has hair that's kind of right. like mine. But they that person wouldn't have been raised how I was raised. Right. And I, all I did was look at Redford's hair and marvel mm-hmm. at it the entire time. Which is funny because in this random still of both of them in character and not even looking at the screen, to, for me, Paul Newman's clearly the hotter one. Well, they're both hot. <laughs> one of them had hair that I wanted. He has and, Kendall hair. Robert Redford right. looks like a Kendall. Yes, and I'd eliminated the guy with hair that was sort of like mine because like, how about if this guy lives until 1974 and he can't feather his hair? Like, what's that going to look? And, and it's worthless. You watched him in the sting and he had like the drier right. kind of sideburn. It mm-hmm. just looked, it looked dry. It looked unfeatherable oh. to me. And so I was out Can based be on feathered. the hair. That's interesting because when I was coming up in this world and Dirty Dancing was all the rage, and I looked exactly like Jennifer Grey. I mean, I had the perm, I had the nose, I had, I looked at the skin, I looked exactly like her. And I thought, if she can do it, maybe one day I can fool people into thinking that I'm attractive. Really? Yeah, I really looked yeah. to her as an inspiration. Sorry about how that turned out. Yeah, but me too. Still inspiring. It was at the time. A little kid doesn't know. I had no one to look to. Yeah. <laughs> there was no bald icons in my era. Hey, speaking of HBO, guess what I watched, which I think Brian already saw? Oh my God, Run, Don't Walk to Woodstock 99. I didn't. Mm. I saw the, the, the earlier rage. one. Yeah. Oh my God, what a literal shit show. Shit like streaming through uh, the yes, fucking feet. I saw it. Did you watch it? Yeah. Oh, what was it? When people talk about toxic masculinity these days, like somebody called someone a bitch, I'm like, oh, honey, yeah. watch Woodstock 99 if you want to talk about toxic masculinity. This ain't it. The uh, other thing I'd realized as I was watching all about six hours of this doc, I guess it was six <laughs> parts and each one was about an hour. All in, and I, I will get the exact time, mm. but all in on uh, Paul's motorsports, mm. uh, less than two minutes. of, of Six hours? Yes, of three, uh, six, uh, yeah, 360 hours or minutes or so. Way less than five minutes, like all, oh. all in of yeah. him, him doing what he loved the most. How much of him on salad dressing? <clears throat> Not as much as you would think either. Huh. Huh. But uh, it was all about acting, and Joanne was in there as well. So you know that's equal time, and it was it was enjoyable. But it really struck me that the people that made this doc about Newman didn't give two shits about car racing. Yeah. So thus, it didn't really exist for them. And now were, I, yeah. I would argue that it's not really up to you if if you're if the main character of your doc is insanely passionate about car racing and that spans decades, then you're you're almost obligated. A, yeah, I was gonna say it's like a fiduciary mm-hmm. duty where you right. must you must cover it, but uh, it was not covered. They covered so little of it, they never got into him and Letterman and running an indie team and and just all of it. Like they just, they never, I spoke to uh, Bob Sharp, Bob Sharp. Hey, Bob Sharp. Yeah. <laughs> Love calling that guy. He's in Florida now. He was in Danbury, Connecticut. He was Paul's neighbor or at least neighbor as much as you can get in that region. He basically Lime Rock was his home track. He Newman was the guy <clears throat> who got hold of Bob Sharp and said, you know, I want to do some racing. And Bob's sort of a neighbor and said, oh, we're going to make this happen. And Bob was literally with him, you know, every weekend for 15 years at the track. Bob's alive and kicking in Florida. They Nobody did, knocked on they his door? Not, they had actors and publicists <laughs> and writers and people you've never even heard of going back to multiple times. Never, Bob's phone never rang. Wow. Now, I'll tell you the story I heard. I don't know if it counts as a rumor or not, but the st- version I heard was that there was a there was a seventh installment planned, a full another hour uh, on his racing, but they realized it was done to perfection and winning the racing time of Paul oh, Newman. Gosh. And they were like, oh, you know what? Why even bother? This has been done. It's been done. Everyone's seen it. They're not going to make the dark night again. You know right, what I mean? Good like, point. <laughs> why waste our time? They did yeah. have us credited winning the racing time of Paul Newman because they just grabbed uh, 45 oh, seconds good, from our movie and just so kind of obviously aware of it <laughs> laid it over there it's interesting this is you know docs now are 
are getting intellectual property from other docs. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Which is used to be you'd get footage from the, the film yeah, they were in. The original yeah. footage. Uh anyway, interesting, kind of long, deep divey, really gives you an idea of like what Hollywood kind of was back in the day and, and the craft and all Gore Vidal and all these <laughs> names coming out of the woodwork. Am I thinking of a different couple or was there a little bit of scandal to Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward getting together? He was married. Right. He had a, a few children. So yes. Maybe so, two yeah. or three. <laughs> a little salacious. He was, I day. think, with Joanne for five years That's while the part. he was still married, which is... Um, Did they talk to the first wife? Yep. Oh. Still alive. Interesting. Um, I don't know if you can pull off five years of that now with the ring doorbells oh. being so ubiquitous <laughs> texting, and no. texting and... I TMZ at every airport yeah. hangar, yeah. every airport gate. Yeah, I don't, I don't think one could pull that off, but uh, they evidently, if memory serves, it was about a five-year affair before, before he broke it off. Hard feelings from the original Mrs. Newman? You know, it was tough because there's this kind of heartbreaking story where the son... Uh, Scott, who it's always sort of the the ante's up in the pain because um, because um, Bob Sharp had a son about the same age who was named Scott, who raced with Paul as well, and so there was a lot of like you know Bob Sharp going, Scott's running with your Scott's running the car, qualifying the car, whatever. It's got to be weird to hear your son's name like mm-hmm. over and over again, right when he died. He he died mm-hmm. at, at 26. Uh, Paul put him in a lot of movies, um, put him in um, The Towering Inferno, mm. put him in... Uh, sorry, his own son or the other yes. son? Yes. Okay. Yeah, no, sorry, his own son. Uh, he's not that good a guy. <laughs> he put him in, before he died, obviously, he put him in uh, The Great Waldo Pepper, I don't remember that. Oh, it was a good movie. It's a very good movie. I saw in the movie theaters when I was young, maybe more than more than once. Yeah, Brian, you know. I was about to say, I haven't seen a ton of Paul Newman movies. I've seen the classics, you know, Butch and Sunday and some Sting and all the that. The Great Waldo Pepper was a Robert Redford movie. I don't even know if if Newman was in it. I, I he. George Roy Hill directed. I, I think he. I think Redford would get people. You know, would get Newman's son. Yeah, sure. he can, anyone can do. The thing that was funny, if you can, I don't know if it's online, Chris. It might take you a minute, but they were showing a little montage mm-hmm. of Paul's son acting in the movies. He literally just had a one line a lot <laughs> of the time. He was a horrible actor with the one line. <laughs> We just took it the, the one line. There was this. You either got it or you don't. There, yeah. Paul was not in the Great Waldo Pepper, so I guess that's a Redford connection there. But uh, Brian, you should see it. Oh, Good movie, amen. worth a worth a watch. Um, the um, in the Towering Inferno, Chris. Uh, oh, in in the Towering Inferno, they showed a clip, Chris. Uh, where they, where they, I, I, I hear you. I know me. you're looking at Dawson. I don't know if you're sorting out something. Um, a, a fireman fell down an an elevator shaft on fire, and uh, it was one of their guys. And it was S- Scott Newman was like the young young guy. Oh no! And he a went, fireman. He did like a dear God or something, <laughs> and it's like I didn't believe it. Oh. Like it was it was four seconds. Yeah. How'd this fucking guy get cast? Yeah. But some Citizen Kane shit. <laughs> and then there's all these interviews with they showed this interview of Paul Newman being interviewed on like, why did you think uh, the Towering Inferno was an important film to do? And you could tell he's just like I got paid a million dollars. He just clearly didn't want to <laughs> yeah. he didn't want to be there. <laughs> so he was trying to toe the company line, but you could just read it in his face. Yeah. He had no Some guys can't fake that shit. They yeah. were such Artist. What are him, your hopes and dreams to leave this podcast studio? Him and Joanne just wanted to do theater and like local, <laughs> regional stuff. And God, I love that man. That's all they wanted to do. That's all she wanted to do was our town, right. you know, like at the Connecticut yeah. Playhouse, you yeah. know, and all of a sudden he's doing the, Irwin Allen, who's fresh off the Poseidon Adventure, did these big, mm-hmm. big movies, movies. And he just did not 
just did not want to be there at at all. But those interviews retrospectively are funny Hilarious. to go back and look at. But I feel like there's an unspoken agreement amongst the the the, the interviewer doing the junket. Like just throw the softballs. We all yeah. know what we're here for. You want clips on at that point. I don't know what entertainment tonight or whatever. You know You're what not going to get the gotcha yeah, moment. Yeah, it's just, just you're, you're pitching batting practice. All right, so we'll see if we can find that bizarre clip from uh, online. We will also also tell you that it is uh, unseasonably hot out here, or maybe just seasonally hot. I think it's seasonably. I got back from Chicago where it was hot. It was very hot in Irvine, California, where it typically doesn't get as hot as it does out here in the Valley, but it was a scorcher yesterday. Went to watch uh, 19 hours of volleyball. Indoor. Indoor. In one of these giant facilities. Um, the giant facilities, which literally have 14 volleyball courts under one roof, all kind of going at it at once, um, became a sauna, but a it was wet heat because oh. there's... Ooh. 16-year-old girls playing volleyball vigorously every 10 feet, I mean, on every court. Then there's the parents sitting there cheering them on. And after a, a number of hours, it got very muggy. No AC or the AC no, didn't matter? No AC. That's what, It's absolutely worse to be inside for those events. 100%. You're the only AC in the building. That's yeah. right. What they needed. Stupid. When I get it, they have a... <clears throat> they have a restaurant part or cafeteria part, which has AC, but the rest, as soon as you stepped yeah. out, it was like muggy New York City in July. Um, it would cost, I don't know how much to air condition, how many million cubic feet that mm -hmm. place was. So they went, yeah, we're in Irvine. We have five bad right. days a year. Suck Deal it up. It. But I will tell you, and I'll tell you this, Brian, you may want to, uh, avail yourself of this and Maybe. others listening as well, which is uh, the whole house fan, people, the whole house fan. Now, this place was a giant facility like you gutted a, a Costco mm -hmm. or Home Depot and just put in mm -hmm. 18 volleyball courts. Um, they had the front door, just two two doors open. And then maybe a couple, then they, they would put these big industrial fans everywhere and just blow it. Right. Now, I don't know etiquette. You guys tell me. <laughs> I'd see guys just standing in front of the fan. Jerk offs. Which is, so I got to get back sacked, blown, all, blown all over yeah, this fucking nice, place. Nice for you. Yeah, I would argue you can air yourself out for a few beats, but don't don't park it in yeah, front of the fan. Yeah, you don't live there now. That's all we got. That's yeah. all this court. There's one yep. one per court. The girls are sweating their asses off and, you know, trying trying their best to be hydrated over the course of 25 games. Um, the whole house. Now, listen, I there is a fan mm -hmm. and you can take. Well, right, let's go through the fan <laughs> fandom. You can take a fan, you can put it in your living room, and you can put it on oscillate, yeah. which I never understood because I'm on the sofa watching TV, I, and it's blowing on a fucking potted plant three quarters I of the time. I hate oscillate. Wait, there's no one sitting on the couch with you people? Swings. I go solo. <laughs> No, this thing's this thing's going around. Is a joke. This thing's going ninety degrees or uh, 100, 125 degrees you or whatever. So preoccupied with the half a second, you're going to get it ten seconds yes. later. You can't focus on anything yes, else. Yes, you've cooled the book rack over there. Yeah, you're, I hate it. I just pop it, keep it on you. All right, yes. so that all right, oscillating bottom of the barrel, uh, fan on you, fine. Um. It's funny. The most ubiquitous one is that big box fan that never has the legs that work yeah, and yeah. always it falls, falls over. So when it's to prop it up, yep. we should work that out. It's uh, 2022. My method, very, very advanced. That was that was the college dorm slash first apartment with no AC, mm -hmm. like the solve to that. You put it in the window at nighttime. Blew the cool window. Air. You, window. You, 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 get, you get the hanger, the, window the wire hanger, stretch it out. Loop it through the handle wow. and hook it yes. to the window. So the two biggest lies Propped. that I can tell on this show that my parents ever told me were, A, my dad said, you have to drink milk if you eat peanut butter to activate the protein. And my mom, <laughs> yep, and my mom's, 
no AC because it costs too much in the summer in Kansas in August. Right. So we had to put our box fans in our windows and keep all of our bedroom doors open to initiate a cross breeze, which never came. <clears throat> in well, theory, correct, but just fucking pay for the AC. In, in the in the window, in the window, better than you know, oscillating's the bottom of the barrel. <laughs> Sorry, she faced it going the other way. Oh, okay. You Your mom the oh, heat pushed the air out. Sucked That's out. a horrible idea. Well, hold on. <laughs> no. Your mom may have been on to something, even if her execution <laughs> was was weak. Um, better. So number three is hanging in a window. Mm -hmm. Now number four, and the best use of a fan is the whole house fan. Now what, what's going on inside the house or inside the volleyball court, Irvine, is this accumulation of hot air mm -hmm. that has nowhere to go. We have an open door, but there's no vacuum, so the right. air is not rushing in, and uh, we're all just steaming up our own shit here, and then we're just blowing blowing it around. The the all fan, the all all home fan, uh, that is in the ceiling, and I'll 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 give you an example. This might blow your mind, but we have this. Oh oh, yeah. good. And then there's version there's versions of this. So what it what it does is the whole house fan you put in the ceiling. You could then duct it to go through the attic and out a vent. Or you could just blow it into the attic, but it's better to get it vented out, out. Yes. There's also a version where the fan is up in the dormer vent of the attic, and then a duct goes down to just your ceiling. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But you turn that shit on, and it sucks the hot air that's inside your house that all you've been doing is kicking the hot air from mm -hmm. one room to the another, back onto your knee, and then back around again. This takes all that hot air and it lifts it and it blows it out. Then you open your window with the screen mm -hmm. and you'll feel the cool air, the night air come rushing in. So it creates a vacuum. Like your mom was onto something, except for your mom needed to open. She needed to have another opening. Yeah. So when the vacuum was yeah. created, the cold air would get pulled in to your home. Does this really work? Yes, yeah, it works. It, Is it, there... So I, I will prove it. Is yes. there a version, because we had our AC, our HVAC replaced uh, four years ago, uh, is there a version that's built into our new HVAC machine? Because I don't know that we have the separate fan, but we definitely have the whole the, the fan function. No, I no? don't think there's a version that can Ours be built in. Ours is on the roof, to be, to be, Your unit's yeah. on the roof. Still, mm -hmm. I do not believe there's a version that is worked and incorporated into this. It's I don't a, know it's a separate. It's a separate unit. But I was thinking to myself, A, and, and it's cheap. It's relatively it's cheap. Better than running the AC. Right. Uh, uh, well, it, uh, it also costs thousands less to install. Mm -hmm. But I was thinking, if this goddamn place had the whole gym fan, you'd put four of them on the, on the ceiling, uh, on the roof, you'd open the doors, you'd fire it up, and you'd just feel this all the hot, sticky, sweaty air getting pushed up and out and then replaced vacuum style by the other. And I... Remember Word Science when everything got sucked out I of the do. chimney? Yeah. Exactly that. And then Kelly LeBrock shows up in her half uh, <laughs> tank top. Yes. I then was done in Irvine and I went to the uh, other shop where the cars are and the production is. Um, that shop has a, a large main room. Uh, one side is kind of man cave. The other side is kind of car museum. Um, I walked in. It was 102 degrees outside. It was about 4.30 in the afternoon when I walked in. I walked in and I went to one of the air, there's this air zone that's the man cave and then an air zone that's with the car museum. I walked in and I went to the air zone. I went to the thermostat to turn the air on and uh, it's, it read 90 degrees. So it was 90 degrees in there. In the next zone, which is the same ceiling height, the same everything. Everything's the same. It's just a big couple of big openings you walk through. You guys know how it mm -hmm. goes. It's, but it's all the same. Mm -hmm. I went there, looked at the thermostat. It said 85. Now, doesn't feel like much, but five degrees is a lot, especially between 90 and 85. And that area has a single solar-powered 
little fan that is the size of about a foot, 14, 16 inches around, just up in the, up in the roof. And it just runs off of solar power, and it has a thermostat. You can do ones with a thermostat, where when it gets over 90, it kicks mm-hmm. on, or 80, or whatever it is. And all it was doing is just sort of buzzing the whole time. But it was enough to make a five-degree oh. difference in, in an area that shared the same basic architecture, mm-hmm. same space. It was just, This one was constantly taking that hottish air. I believe Now, you. if you had a big one and it was whatever, you maybe you could have got it down 10 degrees. And I, I didn't open a door and have it come rushing but in. I'll happily go walking in 85 degree weather. I won't go in 90. So there's a it's, big difference. It's a, it's a difference, but it could be higher. But it this is solar powered. Nice. Didn't have to hardwire it. You can get them at the Home Depot. You can just put them up in that attic and it'll just take a lot of the edge off it. So uh, that's my whole house discussion. Oh, no. I had a, <clears throat> I was uh, thinking of ways to entertain myself in between uh, volleyball tournaments. <laughs> at some point they break for lunch. At some point they have to become the line judges for other games. You get an hour off. Oh, the off. girls do? Yeah. Oh, wow. You find yourself walking in, and that was such a sauna inside that I kept finding myself walking outside, which was hot, but it was it was sort of dry heat. But I was uh, I got myself a a water from the vending machine that was just inside of the facility, and then I walked out of the facility with that water, and I was messing around with my phone and uh, so on and so forth, and then I started to walk back in. And I saw a big sign. It said, no outside food or drink to be brought into this facility. And I thought, well, I guess this would look like I was bringing water in from outside. Mm-hmm. But I purchased it inside and oh. then I walked outside. Mm-hmm. But it's not provable that I didn't just walk this in. And I thought, is this going to be a thing when I come through the check-in thing? Or I go, sorry, sir, the water, whatever. And it, it didn't become a thing, but I decided Larry David should make it a thing. Yeah, I, I got us inside, uh, stepped outside, and the guy going, <laughs> "This the art." Him going, "Once you take inside water outside, it becomes, it becomes outside. outside water. <laughs> this is inside water, inside. This well, you're outside, I don't so see it makes receipt, it, sir. it makes it outside water. Yeah. Once you take inside water outside, he points to the uncomfortable team. I bought it from him. Yeah. Like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> yes, I just thought it would be a complete. Uh, Curb your enthusiasm scene of inside water becoming outside water, but it didn't become a scene, thank God. <laughs> Linda Hamilton oh. is uh, going to join us. I hope you guys have a lot of questions chambered. First, I'll tell you about Simply Safe. Does anything matter more than safety to you and your loved ones? Well, of course not. So, how come so many security companies don't act that way? I trust and recommend Simply Safe. Great company, great sponsors, been with us for a million years. I use their products. 24 7 professional monitoring. Simply Safe's agents dispatch police or first responders the moment a threat is detected, even if you're not home or can't be reached. Just a buck a day, no long term contracts or hidden fees. Two eyes and Simply Safe, by the way. Customize the perfect system for your home in just a few minutes at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Sleek, very sleek design, battery run, do not take up a lot of room. Batteries last up to 10 years. Simplysafe.com slash Adam. Go there today for free indoor security camera, plus 20% off interactive monitoring at simplysafe.com slash Adam. Linda Hamilton will join us right after this. It's time for Nicaraguan Name That Movie with Adam's buddy, Oswaldo. See if you can guess which movie this famous line is from. I'll be back. If you said The Terminator... I'll be back. You're correct. Now, back to the show. Linda Hamilton is joining us. We know her from so many movies. Obviously, the whole Terminator franchise, uh, which was groundbreaking. Uh, New series out, Resident Evil, second season returns. Resident Alien, buddy. 
Oh, sorry, sorry. That's a video game. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> Resident Alien. Thank you. Sorry for that, Linda. That is uh, going to return tomorrow as you hear this on Sci-Fi, and we'll talk about that as well. Uh, nice to see you, Linda Hamilton. Thank you. Nice to be here. Um, I'm just going to go all the way to the bottom of your bio, and then we'll make <laughs> our way back up to the top, because I did about 20 minutes on killer bees coming to California, but no one ever knew was ever stung by a killer bee. But on the bottom of this bio, it <laughs> says, once <laughs> attacked, attacked by killer bees. My God. Stinger removed from under her eye. <laughs> Let's do that. Months later. <gasps> wow. Months later, that stinger just wouldn't wouldn't come out. Well, set the table on that story. I'm curious. What happened? We were we were in Arizona, uh, in the desert outside of. Um, well, we were near Scottsdale, I guess, and. Um, I was playing a tracker. So we were in the desert for weeks and weeks. And I had just gotten used to bees floating up into my, you know, close up, you know, just totally handled it. But we were getting ready to shoot one scene and it was the end of the day and they hadn't vetted the location. It was just they were grabbing an extra shot. And I am a tracker in the desert coming out from an outcropping. So it's just me and my makeup team behind the rock. And my uh, hairdresser is like, what, what are these? Are these bees or flies? Because he was stepping in something. And I was like, who cares? Just get me ready. <laughs> I'm like such a tiger. And then a bee came up and stung me. And then more bees came up and stung him. And I got stung twice. <sighs> and we came. I actually, the first sting because I'm Linda Hamilton, I was like, I just got stung by a bee. Hurry and roll <laughs> camera before it shows. <laughs> right. Like, I don't need medical attention. I just want to get the shot before you can see that I got stung by a bee. But then more bees come out and we basically leave around the rock outcropping and bring the bees with us to the entire uh, crew. <laughs> they, we were chased down a mountain by these bees. <sighs> Just totally aggressive. They go for the face. Um, you know, they don't bother with extremities. It's just so we and we didn't have vehicles there. We were running up and down switchbacks trying to get out of the path of these bees. They followed us into the cars like <laughs> wow. they are super aggressive. So they were the yeah. killer bees and you're in the right part they, of the country for that. because They was... were indeed aggressive. So and it got you right mm -hmm. under the eye. Yes, I got a sting here. And um, our dear medic, uh, when, when things were calming down a little bit, the medic kept putting cortisone under my eye. And then two minutes later, he'd come back and put cortisone under my eye. And I was like, Mike, I'm fine. Go and handle the people that really need you. Well, it turns out he had been stung 90 times. Jesus. The medic. What? Wow. Which is why he kept putting cortisone under my eye every two minutes because he was like out of his mind. Heal thyself. Oh my God. 90 uh, yeah, times. So he's, he's, our medic is the man who went, went to the hospital. Uh, well, speaking of tough and grit and, and intestinal fortitude, watching you in Terminator getting at some point just completely, I don't know if it's complete, but a, quite a physical transformation. I mean, really getting jacked like as kind of the first female mm. in in a way in in our cinematic history to really get buff for a role well, sarah connor was kind of a classic damsel in distress right in the first one and the second one you are the ass kicker was that how what what choice was that amongst the uh, james or you or everyone oh we well it, there was a seven year uh break in between the first and second movie so I had a lot of time to think. <laughs> and when Jim came and said, we're going to do another one, I was like, well, if this woman has been living with this certainty of what's coming, she's going to be crazy. Mm -hmm. So make her crazy. He hadn't, he hadn't written the script yet. So he, uh, he went away and came back a few months later. And indeed, Sarah Connor had, had gone mad <laughs> Um, and we, that was our launch point, you know, like I, I read the script. And I was like, holy shit, I better get ready. <laughs> you know, I better get myself super strong so I can play this woman and, um, you know, do everything that, 
is required to bring her to the screen, you know? Do you remember what the regimen I, I loved, was? I loved the idea. Of, I loved the idea of the shock value. You know what I mean? To go from number one to number two and surprise people. For the third one, I kept saying, what if we made her really fat? <laughs> like, that would be a shock. She let it go. Like, they come back 30 years later and she's just fat. That's crafty as an actress. I don't want to get buff again. What if I just got fat? <laughs> But I, I mean, <laughs> Very smart. Were, smart. You, were you training every day at six in the morning? Did uh, Stallone come by the house like he did with Travolta? <laughs> did we were you living off of egg whites? Stallone didn't come. Stallone did not come by since he had nothing to do with the movie. Um, but Arnold and I trained together, not really much before the film, but when we were doing the film, uh, you know, Arnold travels with a truck with equipment and he was just completely generous in sharing um, all of his resources. So how did you how did you do it before that? What was your before regimen? that? It was it was 18 hours of working out 18 to 21 hours of working out a week. Oh, boy. We worked out six days a week, two to three hours. Oh, my oh I God. guess that's only 18 hours total. But yeah. We worked out about three hours a day, six days a week. And I imagine the the eating was very restrictive, especially at that time as we change what we know about nutrition and stuff. Can you tell oh us what you God. ate? Oh, my God. Yeah, it was non-fat. Yeah. Fat-free. Right. That was just at the at the be, be leading edge of fat-free. A lot of spray butter. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, I could eat an entire Entenmann fat-free cake. <laughs> Like eventually, because I was burning every <laughs> calorie, right? It was just nothing could have fat, so it, was, it really was chicken and salad. But uh, you know, anything that was fat free was like on the table. Fair game. Where do you hail from? Yeah. Did you come out to Hollywood from somewhere? Yeah, I I left. Well, I I grew up in Salisbury, Maryland. Wow. On the Chesapeake Bay. On the way to Ocean City, Maryland. <laughs> this is how my hometown is known. It's on the way to Ocean City. Um, and then I trained in New York for four years, and then I moved to L.A. So, uh, you know, been a long time since I've been a hometown girl. I'm going to try to keep it to 500,000 Terminator <laughs> questions. But uh, speaking of which, at this time, you it was relatively earlier in your career when you got cast. You talk about reading, casting, auditioning. What was that process like? Oh, for the yeah, first, the first Terminator? Yeah, first for one, the yeah. first one. Yeah, of course, because then I had the part. <laughs> Makes sense. <laughs> um, you know, it, it went on forever. I think that Arnold even went away and did a film and then came back and we continued the process. Um, Jim Cameron was exacting, but um, it was also a question of pairing actors that were going to work well together oh. on screen. So did you have a chemistry you know, test read, with Michael Bean? <laughs> uh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. And, and they put me with other actors, too. And uh, and then. I mean, it just seems like it went on for months and months and months. I had always heard that and Lance Henriksen was up for the role before or the Arnold Schwarzenegger role. Did you know that? Did you test with him? Wow, oh, that's old history, isn't it? <laughs> I believe that when I got in, uh, Arnold had been cast as the as the Terminator already. Okay. Because my people were super excited, and I remember that. Are yeah. you? Are do you live full time in New Orleans now? I do. I do. Seven years. Wow. I'm curious. Very about, happy about that. So, um, Bean of Kevin and Bean, K Rock fame, went from L.A. to somewhere outside of Seattle to New Orleans, but he couldn't. He couldn't handle New Orleans. <laughs> it's been described as a place you visit and party and hang out, but you don't live there. And then he went off to England. The Schwitz factor alone. Yes. But I'm curious about <laughs> how that how you've embraced New Orleans. Um, I have never felt more comfortable in any place in the world than I do in New Orleans wow. in terms of how authentic it is. Um the people, you know, not about what you do or what you have. It's all about who you are, how good of a neighbor you are, 
Um, I just am thoroughly engaged with my neighborhood. I walk my dog. There's not a person that I meet that I don't talk to. Um, and the fact that we have hurricane season and have to rely on each other and help each other quite, you know, in the last few years, especially quite uh, significantly in the last two hurricane seasons. And it's just um, it's monumental of spirit, this town um, and just a huge amount of love. Um, and I'm I have found my place. Hmm. Yeah, that's interesting how the hurricane, which doesn't sound like something you'd be looking forward to, ends up being a sort of bonding uh, event. Yes, See, yes, when when an event has happened. Um, I mean, I mean, I had to flee fires when I lived in Malibu, right? Uh, but that wasn't as much of a community effort, but here... We check on each other. We know if they've stayed or if they've gone. Um, sharing resources. If somebody has a Jenny, they'll heat your uh, heat. That's probably not. Um, they'll put air conditioning. You know, they'll share their Jenny so you can have a little air conditioning. It's just, uh, and I and I think trauma will actually bring a neighborhood together too. You know, you see the damage, you make sure that people have a charging station if you've got power. And somehow that's just really unifying. I wonder if there's something to age, not your age, but just sort of the age of the place that you're living in. Because I grew up in the San Fernando Valley. It was all built, you know, between 1967 and 1974. And it, it seemed kind of, soulless it it didn't have any history to it there was no there couldn't have been history because it had only been there for 10 minutes it was like a planned right yeah and i always thought it used to be mexico (laughs) right i always thought about the fact i i had a girl in my acme comedy troupe her name was katie and she was from new orleans and she would tell ghost stories about she was a kid, she saw a ghost, then they moved, and then there was another ghost, and then she'd look at me and I'd go, I'm from North Hollywood. We don't have ghosts. We've not been around long enough. We don't have an old sea <laughs> captain. Alive. Uh, that guy, yeah, he oh, he ran the seven eleven of Reseda and he got shot. And he's still haunting the mini mall. Like we don't have any history. I was like, where are ghosts? And that's but that it seems They're here. Yes, it's it's like it's, it seems weird, but it's a little cultural thing. The- Listen, you'll find a real estate thing hanging in the French Quarter, a little sign saying apartment for rent, not, not haunted. <laughs> really? <laughs> Which is exactly that what a haunted apartment would say. The real estate <laughs> advertising here is not haunted. Have wow. you had any haunting experiences? Anything you can't quite explain? Um, you know, I I would think... My building is actually very, very old. It might date from the late um, 1700s. It's a storefront that was then converted into a storefront with living quarters. But before that, I believe it was um, some sort of warehouse. It's a beautiful brick building with, you know, arched windows that have since been brick closed. But it looks like it predates the storefront with living quarters. So it's funky. Um, and it's two buildings, whatever, you don't need to know all the details, but yes, in one side, uh, m- instead of, instead of the guest rooms, my friends call them the ghost rooms. <sighs> wow. They, um, more than, more than three people have experienced little one friend constantly hears the rustling of antebellum skirts. Oh my God. So she's sure it's a female and another friend of mine heard a voice and she knows it's female. So so there's somebody oh, over there. And you're cool with it. <laughs> My, well, yeah. Um, I'm kind of hurt that I haven't, they haven't visited me. Um, but my air conditioning went out. This is, this is dangerous in New Orleans when the AC goes out in, um, in my bedroom upstairs. So I was going to go, there's a second unit over in the ghost rooms and I was going to sleep there. <laughs> And I couldn't. I was afraid <laughs> to sleep in my own guest room. Sarah Connor's not scared of nothing. I know. I know. Don't, please don't tell anyone. No, I really was like, you know what? I can sleep on this uncomfortable couch one more night. 
instead wow. of going up into the cool. So literally, <laughs> I just didn't want it. I didn't want anyone poking me or you know doing. I, I hear you. Yeah, I, I get it. <laughs> literally, it says not haunted on a, on a realtor sign. He says not haunted. That's an option on Redfin. You can click wow. that. Wow. <laughs> uh, where do you? But, where, yeah. No, no, it's just that, uh, you know, that's also just the history is something that really attracted me and just the beautiful architecture here. I'm, I, living here makes me feel a lot less hungry for Europe. Mm. You know, right. I mean, I just love the ancient history and for to live in a city that's pre-American. Come on. It's really cool. Yeah, I, no, I agree. When you go to Europe, you go, oh, look at the architecture, and, you, mm -hmm. and you're and you put in a different headspace just walking down the street. You know, it's not like you're buying buildings or using commercial right. property. You're just you're there, it. you it know? Just, yeah, and you're just and, in and it. And that's how it feels here in many, many places. Uh, so you literally want, did you go from Malibu to New Orleans? Because that's, that's about no, as I, much. I, I made a brief five-year stop at a farm in Virginia. Okay, so you close didn't get the bends. My, close to my parents. <laughs> I'm a Maryland girl. So I went to, I bought a farm in Northern Virginia uh, because I woke up in Malibu one day and went, the only dream of mine that never came true was a horse and a porch, mm -hmm. right? You don't get horses and porches in California. So I went and bought a farm and got horses and a porch, lots of porches and <laughs> Yeah, you know, Goats and and all of that. And it was while my parents were dying. So I wanted to be close. And my dad was a farm boy and he loved coming to my farm and sitting on the porch. Mm. It struck me. We have decks, but we don't really have porches. Mm. But right. it's a deck, a porch that's behind the house. And then uh, a, uh, a deck. Uh, very different. Yeah. A, a porch is usually on the front of the house or around the side. Sometimes you get wrap around porches and that's like going all the way around. But if it gets uh, to the back, it becomes farms. a deck. <laughs> well, front of a back porch. Yeah. And, and you yeah, don't I have guess. farms on the West Coast either. You have ranches. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's a good point. But on the East Coast, they're farms. I feel like there's more good conversations on a porch than there is on a deck. Yeah. Deck's a lot of screaming at guys. Don't burn it. You're burning. It's <laughs> right. good. Flip it. Flip it, you idiot. Porches are more communal. <laughs> Porches more having, they are. having discussions yes. about things. Sipping tea. Lemonade. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Every once in a while, you got to pump the shotgun and oh, yell. Sure. Get. <laughs> sure. I mean, it's a Porsche after all. <laughs> when the young suitors come by. <laughs> so then from, uh, where were you in in Malibu? Were you, was that when you're married to Jim? Um, I was in Malibu for most of my life. Well, I was in Malibu for I don't know seven uh, twenty years. Mm -hmm. um, that's where I raised my kids, right? Which is weird when uh -huh. you're like from the eastern shore of Maryland and. Like you're raising your kids in Malibu. Um, but I was in Point Doom, which is a pretty yeah. wonderful neighborhood. I know. I agree. Um, We've, I've had discussions with Sean Penn about this and um, Rob Lowe and maybe Emilio Estevez. You know, oh, nothing. Guys who, <laughs> that was just on a Friday. <laughs> <laughs> on the porch. Uh, they, they grew up in Malibu, but they grew up in rural Malibu. They grew up in another Malibu. Yeah. They grew up in 70s Malibu, not $200 million Bohemian mega Malibu. mansions, but riding a horse to like the hitching post mm -hmm. and getting on a bus and going down to Santa Monica High and stuff. <laughs> there, there, there's nothing there. You can go down Point right. Doom and you'll pass Howie Mandel's mega mansion, but on the other side of the street's a ranch from the '60s that a couple of school teachers lived at. Like it, it was a, it's this bizarre, rich and old, and every point doom, every third house is a teardown, single story, two thousand square foot rancher that you might see in the valley. It just happens to be, just happens to have share. Up the street, and Courtney Cox. Right. Yeah. <laughs> well, they were good days, but I haven't really missed. I I don't look back. You know, it's just like 
keep going. Where do you shoot Resident Alien? Is it is it Atlanta or where, where is it? It's no, un, un, not unfortunately. It's 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 very far, Vancouver, Canada. Oh, boy. of course. So wow. it's a long schlep to get there, like you know, eleven hours every time I I fly there because you can't get there on one flight. So. Uh, Which is that, unfortunate. That's, because- that's the downside is that, I mean, not really a downside, but, you know, I travel far to go to work. <laughs> well, with so many things being shot in Louisiana, I thought you'd get lucky. I have gotten lucky here. I did the last season of Claws which literally I could bike to work. It's here Uh, on the West Bank of New Orleans, this little studio, and I would bike to work or walk or run if I was late. I mean, it was like the best experience to just work so closely. That's great. Uh, What's your status? Are you married, boyfriend, girlfriend? Easy. I I don't know anything. I am decidedly single. Decidedly. Decidedly single. Yes. And is that uh, something you'd like to just carry on (laughs) for the rest of eternity? Oh, no, I mm, (laughs) I'm not just for one person. I don't I don't do that very well. Horrible, horrible wife, by the way. I mean, I just forget (laughs) to drop everything and and make my husband feel good when he comes in the door. (laughs) And I forget to feed feed people. I mean, Jim Cameron would come home and go waffles and wine again, darling, because <laughs> that's what we would have for dinner. <laughs> Frozen waffles and wine. Is he a perfectionist no, I, who's I, difficult or is he different than no. he appears? Uh, he he can certainly be difficult, but uh, perfectionist. No, I w- wouldn't call him that at all. Mm. Interesting. Control freak, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> We're saying the same thing. <laughs> yeah, I know. When did being being a perfectionist become a bad thing? Uh-huh. You, were, <laughs> you got me, man. <laughs> I guess it's when you demand other people around you to be perfect. To do your best? Oh, uh. that is one of my sayings. <laughs> oh, that's well said. Do my best. Yes, yeah. that's well said. <laughs> I, I put it on a t-shirt. Yep. I was so invested in it. Uh, so when are you heading out to Montreal? Oh, wait, not Montreal, Vancouver, uh, Vancouver again. Montreal will be a little I don't closer. think we start up again until January. We just got our pickup. Um, so I have a, a stretch of time here, which is great. I've been just so occupied with settling this crazy house and then off to do Terminator and then. I just worked a lot and it's just really nice to have a summer at home with very little on the agenda and no, no workers coming in and making concrete dust (laughs) everywhere. It's just, I'm having a lovely summer. What is a day like for you in New Orleans? A day? Yeah. Basic every day. I'm, I'm up early. Um, I always am up early. I'm just really happy when I, when it's not the fours, like if I get up in the fives, I'm happy, but sometimes it's in the fours. Um, my, I have a huge and very fantastic dog. And so I walk him, feed the animals, um, do wordle, which <laughs> I just love. Um, and I play words with friends, so I love word games. Oh, how does um, that? I oh, read man. a lot. Mm, wow. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. Yeah, yeah, you and Adam would not be able to spend the day together. He can't do any of that. He can't do words. Words, no. wordle, reading, words with friends. Is, is <laughs> Has that always been a thing for you where you get up, you just can't sleep in? Um, as as we get older, I think it, it it's a little more. I mean, I cannot sleep in for for shit. <laughs> ever like if even if I go to sleep at four in the morning I will be up at six or six thirty it just I don't sleep in yeah so one greets the day <laughs> yeah look I'm envious Should of everyone we? who gets up early I I absolutely am envious of it because I wish that, first off it's always just a better healthier life staying up Late, you never do anything good or that's good for you Mm-mm. at that hour. It's always about snacks or fatty shit or booze or masturbation yeah. or all all the stuff God hates. <laughs> it all takes place after the after the streetlights come on. So 
I know it is, but now it is tough when you're the get up at 4.30 person to have brunch with your friends because you tell your normal friends who have a few cocktails and like to sleep in on a Sunday, what time for brunch? Say 7, 7.15? Seven yeah. And they're like, I <laughs> haven't gotten up to take a piss by then. <laughs> Do you one better? Nine o'clock. Do you have a social life out there? Friends, colleagues? Um, I do, but it's sort of on a smaller level, you know, more neighborhood chums. And I don't do a lot of parties. I don't. um, I'm a disappointment to a lot of people that live here because (laughs) I'm not much about the food. I'm I'm a disappointment wherever I go. So I, I don't really go out to eat a lot unless I have to. I mean, but that will be because I haven't eaten for three days. And so I've got to go out. I, I don't can't do, relate to this I, woman. I, I, I know. <laughs> I don't handle food um, issues very much. Like if it's old shit from the fridge, I would, I would do that much sooner than I would actually go and get some good shit from the, from right. the grocery store. Yeah. Well, that's how James Cameron got you know? fucked because <laughs> no, I, so let's let's drill down for just a second on this. I I tell so my dad was sort of like you, except for I always say we didn't go and have many steak dinners because my dad didn't care. Yeah. And when the guy's in charge and he's got the wallet, then you're, it's like James Cameron coming home from a fourteen day fourteen hour shoot. You know what I mean? Like what's to eat? I don't know. Have some egos, <laughs> like and a box of wine, like because. If the person if the person you're with is really into sushi, you're gonna go mm-hmm. out and have oh. sushi a lot. It's the same with going to a movie theater. Yeah. If the person you're with really loves going to a theater, you're gonna find yourself doing that a lot. There's a certain percentage of people who just don't really care about food. I, I bring them up from time to time. It's a it, I envy them in a way. It's an enzyme or a gene or something where they're just like, yeah. I'm just not that into it. Is that you? That's me. <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong. I will like, you know, I could live on cherry pie. I mean, it's not like I don't like I mean, I could live on cherry pie just because I really like cherry pie. Um, But do I ever do I ever say I want to go and have a cake? Someone wrote a song about you in 1988. So three times I had to do it. You just so there's many most everyone I know gets up and goes, I'm thinking about food because I'm awake. And mm-hmm. and then some people go right in. They just go, I'm going to go eat something shitty right now. And others go, no, no, delayed gratification. Mm-hmm. Get your walk in. Then you can have something nice, you know, carrot dangling at the end of the stick. But you don't have the stick or the carrot. It's just literally maybe, eat, maybe when, a carrot. Eat when you're hungry, you eat literally a carrot. I barely eat when I'm hungry. I actually really kind of enjoy being sort of empty and, and the feeling of hunger. Cause I just think it's important. I know. I know. Linda, it's you are a, not Jewish. <laughs> I am not Jewish, but I, you know, the discipline of understanding, I don't mean like on any like huge spiritual level, but I just think it's good to not sat to, to not immediately address your needs. Like no. we do in She's today's right. culture to, to just say, hmm, well, let's appreciate this feeling of hunger for a minute or or fuck it. I'm going to go to sleep and I'll eat in the morning because wow. there's nothing here. It's ready no. for judgment day. <laughs> right. you're, you're, no, you're, you're 100 percent in the sort of mental aspect of it. Like we do not well, need to I eat you, nearly as much as we think mm-hmm. we do. This whole like I have a headache because I have low blood sugar kind of thing. It's like, no, we're not meant to do this. It's a psychological game. Yes. Go ahead. And longevity is about leanness too. They say, and, and I believe that, but, uh, you know, I mean, I'm sure that if I were really hungry, I'd go and eat. I just have, you know, I have gone for, for instance, the last, uh, the last Terminator movie, uh, for a year and a half, I ate the worst food and I had no carbohydrates. For a year and a half. Okay, so the first, the the second movie was fat free. This one was carbohydrate free. So it was just meat and vegetable, meat and vegetable, meat and vegetable. And I hate meat and vegetable. (laughs) I, I, I mean, I just, 
the, never do I go, oh, good, meat and vegetable. Oh, so, but that was a year and a half of eating food that I didn't like. What is because you yeah. have to do, you have to do it for the job, right? So it's really good to disengage mm-hmm. and not have to have really great food because you don't always get to have that, right? It's probably good that you're not dating because the pitch of <laughs> let's get up at four forty five and not eat <laughs> is not enticing to most fellas. If you're bored, read. <laughs> yeah, how about you play words with friends? <laughs> Oh my God! Such yeah. a it's such a blessing to not have. Look, all right. Let's let's put it this way. Let's let's widen the scope a little bit. In a way, like you hear about all these Kevin Spacey or some mm-hmm. of these, even maybe Weinstein, these guys getting into trouble, mm-hmm. you know, and they have a yearning. It's like yeah. I want to be with young men or yeah. I want to be with underage girls or something, mm-hmm. and it fucks them up. Royally, And there's a part of me that wants them locked up. And there's another part of me that feels sorry for them. Like, this is what you want all the time. You'll destroy your yeah. life. Or even someone who can't be monogamous. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's just like this yearning this all, all the time. And all right, you're getting divorced yeah. again and your kids hate you and everything else. You could kind of add food into that. There's people that just obsess over it, think about it all the time and and. I don't know how much of it is just a DNA and just a sort of nature or nurture mm-hmm. or whatever it is, or it's in your bones. But then there's others. It's just like, yeah, I could eat or we could just eat tomorrow. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're <laughs> blessed. Absolutely. I, I mean, I, I am a food, you know, I wouldn't say addict, but I definitely have like issues with it. Alcohol, if I never drank it again, I wouldn't notice. Mm. And when I say like I don't really drink, it's not because I had a drinking problem. It's because alcohol doesn't move the needle for me. How do you feel about booze? This could be strike three at <laughs> the end of this interview, Linda. So I don't drink. Oh, oh. All right. Well, it's called Resident Alien. It's on something whenever. <laughs> <laughs> See it or don't. That'll be your choice. Oh, I know. <laughs> what the hell do we do all day? What can we talk about now? Oh, you read some book with no pictures. la di da You better take some long strolls and look at a lot of architecture. I talked to a neighbor. Didn't know who I was. Got another was robot awesome. movie coming up. <laughs> awesome. Well, you have a big dog. Do. At least that's good. Um, And I love... You know, flora and fauna. I mean, I do notice the birds. And when that Mississippi kite is out there on my walk, I spot it every time. And it's uh, subtropical here. There's always something's always blooming, always flowers. And I actually live in a world where I get to um, see that and appreciate it. I know it's completely simple. No, it's true. We're all blasting. it It works for me. No, we're 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 all walking with purpose past all this stuff to get to the restaurant, right? Essentially, so for uh, being veggies, mm-hmm. you're you're not you're not burdened with. Um, <laughs> look, I, honestly, you go look. I I don't care about food, and I don't care about booze, and I don't care if I get laid either. You're you're home free. Right. <laughs> you're, <laughs> you're a monk. You're a monk. I know realized. it's funny. I'm totally home free. Um, even things like. I would get super bummed out if I would wake up in the morning and there wasn't milk for the coffee, you know, it'd like make the, or a little orange juice. So I gave up milk in my coffee. I didn't want to have my happiness depend on whether there was milk in the morning. I mean, I would be like totally bummed out and now I drink black coffee and I prefer it. If you don't just write, like, well, if you need milk, you, you better give it up. If you don't write the way Strange. of Linda, you, you have to write, a, a self help book for if you don't, if you can't function because you don't know if there's milk, just stop drinking milk. Or a diet book with no yeah, words. And then you, <laughs> just then you won't pages. eat it. It's blank pages. <laughs> Very Buddhist. Blank pages. <laughs> Linda Hamilton, Resident Alien is the name of the sci fi special season two. It's uh, coming out, or series, I should say. Season two was... Uh, season three is oh, coming season out. Three. Oh, season oh, three. Oh, second season comes out tomorrow, I'm wrong. The here. second half of season two is coming out. Thank you on uh, Final Sci-Fi. Offer. Uh, Linda, come back and visit us. Tell us <laughs> all, all right. you haven't eaten in that time. <laughs> 
<laughs> and uh, look, more booze and food for us, That's I right. guess, is, uh, is the answer. For the rest of you, enjoy it. Thank you, Linda. It's been <laughs> fun. Take- She's fun. She's awesome. It is a... To have a kind of catch-as-catch-can relationship with booze or sex or food or whatever is is an unburdened life. Yeah. God damn it. I, I, there's there's no hill to climb. There's no obstacles in a good way. Yes. All right. Uh, Jay Moore is here. First, I'll tell you about Edmonds. Thanks to Edmonds for sponsoring this show. Oh, man. So much going on in the automotive industry these days. It's hard to keep up, and that's why I got to hit up Edmonds. Buying or selling a car can already be a big decision. Environmental sustainability, record gas prices, electric cars. Well, you may be thinking of them, and you may be thinking of them as a new option. For over 50 years, Edmonds has helped people confidently shop, work the market with in-depth reviews, online shopping tools, and expert guidance. Uh, These guys get cars, do long-term test drives. They're not in bed with any of the manufacturers. They pay retail for the cars, then they drive them, then they give you a full review on them. Comprehensive articles like their electric vehicle buying guide, honest in-depth reviews from their team of unbiased automotive experts, and much more at Edmonds, right, Dawson? If you're considering making a change on the road, Edmonds is here to help. Visit edmunds.com slash appraisal to get your free online appraisal today. That's E-D-M-U-N-D-S dot com slash appraisal. Edmonds, they drive it like it is. All right, quick break. One of our favorites, Jay Moore in the studio right after this. Adam Carolla's sixth book and audiobook. Everything reminds me of something. Advice, answers, but no apologies. It occurred to me recently that the classic story of the abandoning father who went out for a pack of smokes and never came home is now considered quaint, like a pickpocket or cat burglar. It doesn't seem to exist anymore. Nowadays, we'd shame the dad more for smoking than rambling. I'm sorry your dad left your family when you were seven, but at least that monster stopped exposing you to secondhand smoke. Everything reminds me of something. Available now, wherever finer books are sold. Jay Moore in studio. Got some shows coming up. Huntsville, Alabama, Stand Up Live. That's September 9th through the 11th. And then it's off to Sacramento at the Punchline, September 23rd and 24th. Live dates at Moore. M O H R dot com. Good to see you, my friend. Yeah, my man Ace. <laughs> yeah, how you feeling? Feeling good. Why? What have you heard? I hear you're healthy and yeah. uh, sober and everybody's pregnant, drug free, <laughs> and yeah, all that. Crippled dudes, they stay hard. Ah, hmm. yeah, ah, yeah. Never thought about they that. They got Tracy. that implant. Yeah. No, I feel great. I, I'm. I'm. Uh, you know, it's I go on stage now and I just tell the audience they don't look the same either. Get that out of the way. Because <laughs> they're all staring at me like I'm the dad from The Incredibles. Or they want to know who's this pregnant lesbian talking to us. <laughs> it's me. Well, you work out a lot, or you did. Yeah, I was, I so was coaching you... wrestling on speed. I was so skinny, my nipples got longer. <laughs> I had those, like, West Hollywood guy nipples. Yeah. but Mike that, and Ike's. Yeah, yeah. I guess Mike you, and Ike's you, is right. You, you look great. You couldn't Thank get much you. thinner than. I feel the same. Uh, so when I was at my skinniest, I was dirt poor, and I taught boxing for a living, and then I went from that into radio, and I just immediately <laughs> put on twenty pounds because, like, what is more sedentary? And your your world revolves around food. All all you would do is I'd see. Jimmy at uh, eight in the morning, and I'd go, Okay, I got a coupon for the Acapulco <laughs> Mexican restaurant. It's half off, half off. We can be there by 11 30. If we get out of here, you know, if we do our post mortem here by wrap it by 11, and you just sit and yeah. eat and talk. You literally went from on your feet, running people through heavy bag drills and no money to money and talking. I remember at a high school, I won't say, but uh, Adderall would like fall out of my pockets while I was wrestling and like 14 year old kids would come up to me with like eight orange footballs like coach your pills All right? 
I was like, yeah, it's from my heart, you know. <laughs> yeah, and then later, wrestling. then I'd go crunch some rails off the toilet paper dispenser in a high school bathroom, and then uh, I'd be wrestling live, and they'd be like, Coach, watch out for your heart. <laughs> I was like, no, it's fixed now. <laughs> I'm all better. Thanks, though. Little know-it-all. Is Adderall abuse a big thing? We're, we're kind of talking about fentanyl now and heroin and... Not so much really about heroin. Pot, we're all kind of over. Is Adderall the thing? And is it coming in bootleg now from like China and Mexico? I don't know. I, I had a prescription for it. Well, my first year of sobriety, I saved $37,000 on Adderall. Nice. Wow. That's with the prescription. Damn. Crazy. Wow. I figured like $15, $12 a pill, eight pills a day. Like, yeah, it was nuts. But I definitely had Adderall that was pressed with meth because you couldn't break them in half. Oh. And I got some man hands on me. I know mm-hmm. Gina appreciates sure. mm-hmm. Absolutely. some daddy hands. Yeah. And then so I, that's how you could tell? If plus, something well, was like when I bootleg? snorted on it, like, it definitely felt different. <laughs> you could feel like a burn? Oh, it burned like crazy. And then it felt like somebody was sitting on my chest. So, But the pill would look the same. Yeah. So, and- so this is becoming a thing now, which is, thank you, China and Mexico, which is <laughs> prescription knockoffs. Yeah. I mean, this is this is going to be the thing. Yeah, and, and like you a know, fake Louis Vuitton bag of yeah, <laughs> the, drugs. Yeah, really. Out of China. And, and Mexico would, would have that, too. Yeah. They'd knock off stuff from the NFL stuff, you know, bomber jackets. Yeah, yeah, right. The Kansas City <laughs> Chiefs. Yeah. yeah, the chefs. I, so... <laughs> We go, all right, we're not going to, we don't need your pot anymore. We'll grow that ourselves. And they go, all right, well, we're not folding up. Right. We got an enterprise here. Yeah. So now they're getting into prescription stuff and it's fucking a lot of people up. But, but like, you could tell by breaking. Well, you couldn't break it. Like it was, I mean, it, it took a Herculean effort to even just break it in half and then to crunch it up. It took like. But the, you would, you would snort it anyway. Oh, yeah. But I mean, you could tell immediately. Yeah, it was different. And I, I really blame China for my drug addiction, to be honest. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. what percentage do you think of my body's racist against the Chinese for my drug addiction? <laughs> yeah. Like no, what what percentage do you think of those pills you were getting were bootleg? This is a year and a half ago, right? 20, yeah, 17 months. 25%? I was way off with yeah. my 18-month guess. <laughs> Yeah, a little less of a year um, and a half. I, that's, that's, right. that's on me for being that bad at math. Sorry. No, it's good. I, it means you're sober. You're paying attention. Yeah, well, with you. I gotta, you know, you got to expect the ball when you're in the paint with the ace, so, man. You never know when the no look's going to come. So it's probably much higher now, the percentage in the last 18 months, what's going on with the border and China and everything else. But what percentage do you think it was for you where you go, this pill? 25, 25%. Really? Yeah. That high. Yeah, well, it was. It wouldn't be the brand. It would be like the orange. It would be a more of a peach colored circle with a very definitive, definitive like fifty fifty split, like a like a, a pie chart, like half and half. Mm-hmm. Whereas like the brand is more of an oval, mm-hmm. or they're like time release capsules. I snorted those too. Mm. I, I, cr- I crunched those up. Which defeats the purpose of the time oh, release. I don't even know. <laughs> it's, I was out of my mind. Oh my god! How'd you get the prescription? I just told the doctor I had trouble focusing and, you know, I, I lied. You know, right. let, let me tell you something. I, my first time I ever took a pill, I went to the dentist and he pulled a tooth and he gave me 10 Vicodin. I never took a pill before in my life. So it was probably like 38, almost 40. And I took one Vicodin and all of a sudden, like 10, 15 minutes later, I feel that little golden hum mm-hmm. running mm-hmm. through my body. Then I went to the guest bedroom of my house and counted out the other nine to make sure that guy didn't fuck me. <laughs> wow. That, like, right off the bat, I'm like, eight, nine, and I'm talking to myself like, it better be nine in here, you motherfucker. I don't care if you're in Vietnam. I'll fucking go back and kick your ass. <laughs> well, so that's the part. So we were just talking about this with Linda Hamilton, not Vicodin. But you take a Vicodin, and for three out of every four people, it's like, all right, I feel weird. I want to say, I, I don't like it. Yeah. But for that one, you love it. And now it's on. Yeah. You know, when I was addicted to Vicodin, I topped out at two a day. That's it. Like, I know people that are, you know, up in the 20s and 30s. Oh, Drew would tell me people are into the 90s. 190. Really? Oh. 900. Who's that? I don't know. Bobby okay. Hollander. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> we'll talk to Bobby in a minute. And, oh, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, but two, 
made me a completely different person. Really? Where I remember coming home, I had just started dating Nick, Nikki, and she was packing bags. And I said, what are you doing? She goes, well, you obviously don't like, she was like crying. She was like, you obviously don't like me anymore. I was like, I'm addicted to the Viking. <laughs> don't leave. <laughs> I'm doing two a day. Yeah, I was, doing, I'm, I was a mess. On two. Yeah, but Adderall, just any waking moment, any anything I any thought I had, the phone would ring. I'd be in my car at a red light, just snort them off the phone case. And <laughs> did it always have to be crushed up and snorted? Couldn't you? No, I'd swallow them too. Oh, okay. Yeah, just making sure. It coming and going. Was it? Is yeah. it just speedy? Yeah, it, it was like it was like when you have way too much coffee, but it's not. Focus more in your belly. It's more like your temples and your heart. It's more like your there's sort of like an asterisk in your chest, like spinning around. You know what's weird? You, have you gotten any tattoos since you got sober? No, I'm the minority. <laughs> yeah. So a lot of people they start doing base jumping or getting mm-hmm. tattoos or get really hardcore into tough mutters or something like it. Something replaces right. the activity. What did you replace it with? I eat. And I take naps. <laughs> All right, rock and roll. I don't yes. know if you notice my, my newfound core strength. <laughs> yeah, you got your man strength. Usually I'm on my new diet black shirt, but today I figured I'd <laughs> stretch my wings and wear brown. Yeah, I'm, uh, yeah I, I gained probably 40 pounds. I'm like 230. Really? Yeah. Well, you wear it well. Yeah. Yeah. But you, you, but now, like I said, you were doing a lot of paddle boarding and out in the bay swimming and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, when you, when me and you were in Malibu, I was, I wasn't even high that time. I was out in the water for like an hour. There was some like MMA guy that was out in the water and he tapped out. Yeah. No, Jay was. I was at home. Yeah. I love it. Yeah. The, yeah. My landlord and I'm going to go, fi- I'm going to go back and fish Thursday and, uh, I, I, it's be my first time on the water since I went to rehab. I think the water's where you belong. I agree with you, hundred percent. It's good for your soul, man. It's good for your brain. Oh my god! I don't know. This is. I got a good life. I, I, I was actually. I laugh at like how great my life is. Like the biggest stress in my day is like, am I going to get a nap? <laughs> <laughs> I got a new bed and it's higher than my old bed, so I feel like a little kid every time I get into it. Like, oh, oh my god, I'm in no. a big bed. Bed height. There's a chapter in one of my yeah. books on bed height. It's important. It's, it's all there is. It's got to be up high. Now, listen, I grew up, my mom's bed was on the floor. She had no box spring and she had no oh, frame. I remember. Just fr- boom, mattress on floor, bad. Mm-hmm. Uh, then you go up, you get a box spring on floor, bad. Then you get the frame, good. But when you really get up into that height, the, it's the, the perfect height is your small dog needs stairs. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. But you get too high, you're in prison. Yep. You, know, you know, I mean, you're yeah. back with me. No, I, I built lofts for every poor person I knew when we were 20 because we're, everyone had a shitty little apartment and the room wasn't big enough to put a desk and a bed. So I'd build them a bed. I had a, I built myself a loft, like it hit my head on the ceiling. Sex was uh, yeah. difficult. Yeah. Up yeah, there as well. Let's go have sex. You need a boost? Yeah. <laughs> well, my whole thing is so I can't get you up here. <laughs> <laughs> If I'm reaching for my groin going, I think my hernia is aggravated. Like, yeah. And by the way, you know, that's me buzzed. You know, yeah. if I can't get you up here. Yeah. That's it. That's With it. With drunk strength. That's right. Oh. Drunk strength. How'd you hurt your pinky? Oh, I, I had surgery on my hand. How come? Uh, I had a disease. Oh, you can't extend all his fingers. But uh, then I had surgery. Eventually, like a, like a primate disease. But eventually, I, I realized I, I did it to myself because when I was a boxing coach and a little bit of a boxer, my feeling was always that my left hand, which is my strong hand, it's a southpaw, I was like, that will always be there. That'll always be strong and it'll always be good because it's just your dominant hand and just like your right hand will always be there if you're right handed. So you should take your weak hand and you should do 10 times as much work with your bad hand because your good hand's going to be there. And so I would just throw tons of uppercuts and hooks and jabs and stuff with my right hand. And now my right hand's all fucked up. So kids, if you're listening... 
<laughs> it's, it's a, a dominant, dominant, it's a dominant hand for it. a reason. Yeah. yeah. You actually got my mom to swear because, you know, she has the same thing you do, but she's never had hand surgery. And she goes, how the hell did Adam let it go on this long that he had to have hand surgery? I go, well, maybe. How the hell did Dr. Drew let it go on? So she's she's upset. Dupatrins, it's that, called. Yeah, that's and uh, yeah, my fingers were folded in. And. I'm able to live with a lot of things uh, that have to do with myself that I don't really tend to. I just kind of get used to it. I have a high threshold for pain and I just kind of get on with it. But I did a car race a few years, a few months ago, and I could not get my race gloves on. My fingers were so like bad. I, I couldn't get oh, my no. hand on Holding a pencil and thing. The- yeah. yeah. And so it was at that point I knew it was time for change. Uh, we talked about the great Bobby Hollander. Mm. Uh, we was she married do, to Audrey Hollander? Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm. Who's that? All right, let's play. Let's play. Bobby was the porn impresario. Yes, that's the word. He did a little directing. I don't know if he did a lot of work. An auteur, the Citizen Kane <laughs> of right. money shots. I I did not when I was younger, eighteen, nineteen. I could not afford my own porn. I could not afford a VCR. My dad didn't have a VCR or his own porn, but I had a friend whose dad had a VCR and a couple of porn movies. We had Taboo 2. Mm. We had Sex Boat. Mm. And we not had. Not as good as the book. And we had Bobby Hollander's. Jay, please. We had a Bobby Hollander film. And he would set these things up just the way you're going to hear this. And it, it burned in my psyche because the other porns were just like, it's Sex Boat. So we're going to get on a boat and have sex. Right. I was going to say, what's it about? But we didn't, we didn't have a narr- narrator. But here, here we go, like our town. Hi. Mm-hmm. You thought it was Alfred, but it's not. My name is Bobby Hollander, and I'd like to introduce you to a tape called The Personal Touch. Now, The Personal Touch is something different in home entertainment. It's strictly adult, strictly X, and it's hot. It's so hot, it's going to blow your balls off. It's going to want to make you wet your panties. It's going to want to make you reach in and grab it. It's going to want to make you come right on your television screen. The personal touch means personal touch. It stars Shauna Grant, Sharon Mitchell, Paul Thomas, Ron Jeremy, Dominique, a newcomer to the screen. They've all landed on their feet, by the way. (laughs) The personal touch was shot on videotape oh. to give you the finest quality. <laughs> As opposed to... <laughs> it's going Wax to let you, cylinder. the whole <laughs> audience, get out of your bed, off your couch, out of the bar, and you guys that are watching it in a bar, we're going to be into the bathroom in a minute, pulling your wang wang. I don't mean to say it in an obscene way, no. but we, we wanted to make it that way. Shauna Grant in this film who stars you've seen in Penthouse, you've seen in Swank, High Society, <laughs> Chic, Hustler, Velvet. You've jerked off to her in Genesis and Gallery. Oh. She's True. gorgeous. She's young, she's blonde, and she has a body that'll blow you away. How does he know so much All about right, me? Pa- pause it for a second. First thing. Oh, right. my you God. Have to, you have to clarify. When you go, you've seen her in high society, you don't mean out and about with, <laughs> like, a a- Ava Paul. Gabor. Right. You mean the magazine. And when you, <laughs> say, a party. when you say jerked off in Genesis, a lot of people, that's a Bible reference <laughs> right. for a lot of folks. So, Bobby, you need to really be specific. Yeah. Welcome to the Copacabana. Here comes Shana Grant. <laughs> that's right. You may recognize her from such films as The Personal Touch. <laughs> with Clark Gable. Clark Gable. <laughs> Smoke oh, Lucky's friends. <laughs> That's right. And buy a ball war bonds. <laughs> Coming out to the ballpark, Jackie Robinson <laughs> leads all black hitters with 14 hits. <laughs> all right, let's hear a little more. Bob, Bobby Hollander, born Ira Allen Sachs to a Jewish family in Brooklyn, of Jogging. course. Directed 59 movies between. <laughs> 59 19- feels like a real failure. <laughs> 1979 and 1995. He's he's gone now. But uh, sorry. She's going to tell you how you can write to her personally <laughs> and get a free black and white personally autographed photo of her just by sending your name and address. Hey, can it's I no say hope, this? No, jo- no hope gets no joke. Um, as a father, <laughs> what would you find more disturbing? <laughs> the 
you know, finding the Shauna Grant porn in your young son's room or finding the autograph headshot yeah. where she was wearing like an evening gown. And it had his name on it. Does it feel weirder? <laughs> yeah. The headshot's worse. Headshot's worse? More interactive. Yeah, it's personalized. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Dear I just, Adam. I just made sure I didn't say either of our son's names. I came so close. <laughs> All right. We'll play. We'll, we'll continue. Dear on. Connor. And we know. The personal touch is hot. Ladies, go out. I hope you have new batteries for your vibrator. Husbands, whip five on yourself. Do it lubricated. But this tape is designed to make you want to do it. It's directed to you. We hope you blow your nuts off on this tape because it was made that way. And before I blast off my mouth and go any further let me introduce you to one of the stars in the business miss shauna grant here she is folks shauna grant <laughs> from a night on the town the hostage aspect of this video <laughs> with folly granger <laughs> here she comes watch out those are implants friend <laughs> let's see her it's like the aviator <laughs> yeah <laughs> thanks for the intro didn't i tell you she's a real dame you, told you that you can write to me and I would love it if you wrote to me. I'll, I will send you a picture, and I will autograph it. The address I would like you to send your name and address to is Kincaid, K-I-N-C-A-I-D, 1865. Bensonhurst, 453. Suite 318, Tarzana, California. And the zip code is 91356. Not only will I send you a black and white photograph, but I would like to hear your comments on the video. I'll tell you the one thing about growing up. I complain a lot about growing up in the San Fernando Valley, but I could have drove out to Reseda oh, and yeah. picked mine up in oh, person. Right. Saved myself a lot on postage and handling. <laughs> Look at her, friends. She's from Tarzana, the gateway to Panorama City. <laughs> the San Fernando Valley, orange groves, pornography. <laughs> Shauna Grant, <laughs> you're going to blow your balls off. Come on out to the ballpark. Here we are. Whip five. What is that? Whip five, Whip five on, on yourself. yourself. <laughs> Hello, friends. Here we are. Personal touch grand premiere at, Gra <laughs> at Grumman's Chinese Theater. Oh, and here comes the hedgehog. Here comes Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Don't give him a countdown. He'll make a mess on the sidewalk. <laughs> Shauna Grant, real life pornographic actress. Just got done with Robert Mitchum. <laughs> <laughs> you may see her in Penthouse, Swank, High Society, and of course, GI News. <laughs> what year did she kill herself? No, oh, she's, oh, she's, no. She's, she's, I'm she's, losing my erection. You didn't know that? No, oh, I just got one. Oh, I could have guessed. I couldn't figure out how to say it that way. <laughs> Thanks for picking me up, Ace. <laughs> Ace she, looks handsome. Yeah, she, good killed, guy. she killed herself. Oh. How'd she Two do it? Two years after this? She found out Rock Hudson was gay. Yeah. <laughs> Rock Hudson, the real ladies' man. <clears throat> with Lee Liberace coming up behind him <laughs> with a dame on each arm <laughs> and a cape. I'll tell you how she didn't kill herself. She didn't drive her Bentley off a windy road in the south of France. No. I'm going to guess more she, bullet to the head. She shot herself with an AR-15. Oh, that AR-15? That's yeah. rare for ladies in to Palm do Palm Springs. Thing. Yeah. Yeah. 1984, so not long after this. What year Wasn't did we AR figure AR-15 or not? It's not on fucking insane. Eh. AR-15 style rifle. Jesus. Well, Here she comes, friends. Shona Grant <laughs> with Wayne Lapierre. <laughs> <laughs> He's a real gun nut. <laughs> I do like the idea of 1930s announcer guy calling opening for porn films. Here we are, friends. Shauna Grant, who said, you know who would look great on these walls? Me. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> oh, man. Over the line. Market zero. <laughs> <laughs> was she discovered at Schwab's? <laughs> she was discovered on the stool at Schwab's. <laughs> Picked up her labia and walked right into stardom. <laughs> Shauna Grant, Sharon Mitchell. Is she a man or is she a woman? No one knows, friends. Uh, well, she kind of does look like a man. She has a, she has a short haircut. Has a nose like Jeremy Hotz. <laughs> here she comes. And here come the stars. Jesse Adams, Blake Palmer, and young Tom Byron. 
Watch out! Don't get too close. They may be loaded. Uh, These are real live adult stars. You may have seen her in jugs. Gent. <laughs> and other... <laughs> they all start with GM. <laughs> Genesis, gallery, jugs, gent, and gallery. <laughs> well, galleries twice. Who made this shit? <laughs> well, maybe Hollander said it twice. All right, let's hear what the rest of, of what it really Shana falls Grant off after has, the penthouse. has to say. And see you again. Thanks. Before we go any further, Shana's going to make sure that you see this film crispy and crunchy. Oh. Loosen your tie. Okay. Kick off your shoes. Maybe Hold on a second. I, you think there's a lot of <laughs> Windsor not wearing guys watching this? Like, take your spats off. Stay a while. Remove he, your cummerbund. He your arm me, garter. He, yeah, he lost me his shoes. <laughs> I'm going to do my best to describe the body language here. He is at about 45 degrees yeah. towards her. She is recoiling. Yeah. Take out that pocket watch and tell the butler to take the night off. <laughs> tell your footman you'll see him later. <laughs> Pull out your wang wang. Take out your wang wang, friends. <laughs> Don't show this video around any Negroes. <laughs> they can't control themselves. <laughs> Did I mention <laughs> Gene Hollow, a real dame of cinema? Let's see just the end of this, Chris. Unzip the pants. Whoa. <laughs> Drop your pantyhose, ladies. So Sean's going to clean off your TV screen. He's going to dust it off. So don't get up for, for a minute. If you have to pee, if you have to eat, shut the tape right now. And then put it back on. Because this is a tape you see from beginning to end. And we know a lot of people out there never get to the end. But shit, you'll be watching it once, twice, three times. You're going to love it. It's hot. It's a stroker. <laughs> now let Shauna dust off your TV screen. Oh. So you don't miss a thing. Do you want a little more depressing news about Shauna? Yes. In 1983, Grant retired from the adult film industry after less than a year and just over 30 films in which she had sex on screen with 37 men after contracting herpes and having an abortion. Oh. Not quite the fantasy that uh, Bobby Hollander is. <laughs> herpes, the hidden killer. But don't worry, friends, as long as she's in remission, you'll be back on the battlefield in no time. Fighting Japs and Krauts. Shauna Grant, a real live American dream. Here she is, friends, fulfilling all her dreams and purpose. Moving to the San Fernando Valley to do pornography. <laughs> oh, no. oh, God. It's oh. such a weird life. Here comes Dominique, a real live black woman. <laughs> it's so... How do we have this much range as human yeah. beings? How do we end up with the Shauna Grant and Linda Hamilton alive at the same time, probably about the same age? Oh, Jesus Christ. Living in the same town? Uh, living in the, the probably as the crow flies seven miles yeah. apart from one another. Oh, my God. Tarzana, the Riviera of the San Fernando Valley. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. I like this massive uh, Wikipedia page you oh, pulled she, up. Yeah, she has a lot of info. Let me see your picture. Well, she has a lot of fans. There's no doubt. She was very attractive. Colleen Marie Applegate. Mm. Was her real name. Yeah, from Minnesota. Earned um, up to $100,000 in her two-year <laughs> career, friends. <laughs> Little known fact, Christina Applegate's last name is Grant. <laughs> yes. oh they God. actually yeah, swapped yeah. I didn't them. Realize oh, that. yeah, there was a discussion. Yeah. Wow. Jesus Christ. Well, look, we're talking about her. Yeah. You know, all these years she on. Buried? <laughs> she's in Polly Shore's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and she's had more than... She had a couple of suicide attempts uh, before that. She finally you know. got it right. <laughs> she's a hard worker, a busy bee, a busy beaver. I always bring it up. <laughs> I think I always mistake her for the other blonde who killed herself, who was a Polly Shore girlfriend back in the day. Yeah. We can think of her. I forgot her name. Any porn stars? Was it Savannah? Savannah. Savannah, yeah. 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 She probably uh -huh. came around about five years later or something mm -hmm. like that. And any porn stars or strippers in your past? No, I'm, I, I, no. I hit for power, not average. 
Nice. I wasn't, you know, mm. I never fooled around with waitresses at clubs. And, mm-hmm. Yeah. People yeah. think it's easy. People think like, oh, you're a comedian. You get laid all the time. It's like, well, not really. You get up, you say goodnight and walk that way. They get up with a date and walk that way. <laughs> right. Mm-hmm. So if you do see a woman in the audience, you know, that you want to say hi to, you have to make your way through your own crowd. Yeah. Pardon me, excuse me, selfie, selfie. Hi, my brother's got a mustache. Isn't he funny looking? Yeah, yeah. Right. And then go up to them with a date in front of everybody and be like, hey, I don't know if you guys are together, but uh, yeah. If not. <laughs> what would it sound like if Norm MacDonald was trying to get that date? Well, I saw you in the audience there. You know, I'm a... Uh, I don't know if I'm going to whip five on myself, <laughs> but uh, I do know I do it lubricated. That's right. And I'd like to do that with you, you see. I may be an old chunk of coal. I want to fuck. <laughs> what would it sound like if Norm was taking Bobby Hollander's place? Well, we got a great movie here called, uh, what, the personal, what? <laughs> the personal touch. <laughs> You're going to take out your uh, wang wang and blow your balls off. It's good. I don't know. I, f- I feel sex is shameful, you know? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what would it sound like if Al Pacino was selling it? Well, I hope you're not wearing your tie, because if you are, you already came <laughs> and committed autoerotic asphyxiation. <laughs> what a way to go! With Shauna Grant, my voice cracked. <laughs> That's how passionate I am about the personal touch. Where is Bobby? I want to know where that genius is. He gave me the best acting advice I ever got in my life. He's good on his feet. He said, don't come. Don't come. <laughs> Hold Two it words. In. Wait till you get up into the loft. Mm. Get in the loft. Mm. That's how you know you're going to get laid when they crawl up into the ace man's loft. Mm-hmm. Good luck getting down. Yeah. Whoever. Yeah, like Frankie says, man. Relax. Don't do it. <laughs> That's what he says. <laughs> Don't do it, Adam, because here comes Vanessa Del Rio. Oh, yeah. Look at the flaps on that one. <laughs> Spicy. Oof. Uh, looks like a sad butterfly. Oh, uh, God. <laughs> looks like an origami swan got shot with a BB gun. Who? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess the... Uh, Bobby's left us as as well. I don't. Yeah. Is that Vanessa Del Rio, or did somebody roof your chimpanzee's mouth? <laughs> <laughs> I gotta know. Uh, I think Vanessa's retired, but I, 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 I think Nina Hartley. Nina Hartley is like '80s porn royalty. Yeah, she's still out there. Never slugging. my thing, but I think she's out there doing it at 70, Gina. Mm. God bless her. Yeah, God good bless for her. her. You know? I don't want to do it. Yeah. You want to do it? You want to play MILFs? No, no. I um, I don't I don't I don't get it, but but I think Nina Hartley Get it away, is trigger. No, the, is that no. her? The get it Tom up. Brady get it away. of porn stars. I mean, she she started in like 85 and is she, still doing it. She looks like <laughs> like a social worker maybe? Yeah, well when well, you're is she is she 60? She's 63. 63. It's, it's like, still doing porn? Yeah. But is she more of like is she yeah, there she is. Kind of like an an educator, like sexual educator. <clears throat> is that her thing? Yeah. I I really don't follow her that closely. <laughs> I just remember she was hearing that she's still doing porn and she started. I mean, what year did Nina Hartley uh, star? She, her Twitter bio says she's been keeping it sexy and real since 1982. Wow. I was graduating North Hollywood High when Nina Hartley was breaking into the porn business did and they? she's still doing it. Good did they have her. vaginas then? <laughs> Oh, they had them. You couldn't find them because yeah. they were <laughs> thicket of hair. Women didn't have orgasms then. They had one of their spells. Yes. <laughs> the hysteria. Yes. They got She's the vapors. The hysteria. Her, her vagine got the vapors. Right. That's I right. The vapors. Like it saw Elvis. Still doing <laughs> porn, so says, uh, so says Chris. Yeah. Nonstop. So this is Chris, like anecdotally or through no. research? Uh, through well, on, on her Twitter, she's uh, definitely posting a lot of videos. Okay. Chris, what's your go-to porn search? Uh, <laughs> Gilfs. <laughs> well, yeah, lately this. it's been Nina Harley. No, I um, I don't have a go-to. Oh, I'm just okay, kinda, yeah. liar. <laughs> All right, yeah. 
All right. Is this how you want a relationship to be, Chris? <laughs> Full of lies. <laughs> we'll it's really more here. about how his, he wants his marriage to be. <laughs> oh, okay. Does... So at, at, at a certain point, if you stay in porn long enough, it becomes noble now. Yeah. It's empowering. Yeah, absolutely. It's like good for her. Yeah, good for doing Nina it for Hartley. herself. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. There was All a right. time where I was like, I could do that. And people go, oh, there's a lot of people around. I'd be like, that would make me like it more. You know, I'm kind yeah. of a show off. Oh, really? Exhibitionist. Now it's, I'm, I'm so uh Well, let me old. ask you, let me ask you this, Jay Moore. No. You felt confident you could do porn when you were in your prime. Oh, yeah. And you could pull off the money shot. Oh, that'd be the best part. Just With a guy wearing cut-off sweatpants and holding the boom mic. And... That'd be the hardest part not to come, that part. <laughs> <laughs> Gaffer's tape on his belt. Yeah. So you could pull that off. <laughs> well, I mean, hindsight's twenty twenty. You know? Yeah. But what about, what about guys who can't? pee in front of other guys. Mm. I'm more, I can, it just takes me a while and then I get in my head that it's taken me a while. Mm. But that's all bondage of self, Adam. <clears throat> so are you saying that you might have difficulty taking a leak at Dodger Stadium with a bunch of dudes in there, but you could go on to a porn site and bust a nut in front of a crowd? Not now. No, I know, but in your prime. I'm an old, you know, I'm the dad from The Incredibles now. In your prime. Yeah, my prime. I, I think I'd so like the, it because I'd be the center the, of attention. The pee shyness didn't slow, didn't translate. Well, I have a, I have a small urethra. Mm -hmm. Said Hank Hill. Uh huh. I have a small urethra, Peggy, <clears throat> and uh, so it takes me a while to get going. And I always, the bondage of self is that you think everybody else is thinking, "What's taking this guy so long to pee?" But no mm -hmm. one's in there. It's like when you dance, you think everybody on the dance floor is saying, "Like, wow, look at that guy. He looks right. like an idiot." But everyone's worrying about how they look. Right. So that wouldn't translate it onto the porn set. Apples and oranges. <clears throat> have you guys holes. ever been on a porn set? No, I don't think I have. No. Uh oh. Hold Jay on. Has. I have been on a porn set. All right. Really? I, uh, I see more butts. Oh, yeah. yeah. See more butts. His showrunners for his Showtime show, Family yeah, that Business. Yeah, Showtime show for right. like a year and a half or two years. We entertained the idea of having them be the showrunners for Last Comic Standing. <laughs> uh, maybe I just did. Mm hmm. <laughs> And uh, so to go meet them, it was on a set to kind of see what they were doing. And he said to me, um, look, I got this is like a crazy scene today. So I don't want my actor getting spooked. Would you mind holding a camera? Well, and you could just shoot. Uh-huh. Because he didn't want you just standing around. Yeah, like blend in. Yeah. Your a actor, actress, the gr gal? Two actresses, one actor. <laughs> mm -hmm. And it was the single greatest athletic feat I've ever witnessed in my life. They're Olympians. Who are we worried about getting spooked? The dude? Yeah, because he had to keep it going for these two girls. And You've been was... to many Laker games. <laughs> and this is the, the greatest athletic feat you've ever seen. You don't understand. Tell this, me. This guy was just <clears throat> doing that. It was like four hours. Really? And two different girls. Like, enough with this one. That, this is probably 25 years ago. Like, uh, this one, then that one, then this one, then that one. Then something would go wrong. The girl had to run to the bathroom and come back out. And then... It, what I've, would go wrong? These chocolate <laughs> chips. Pull a hammy. Wow. Oh, yeah, well, the but they, I know they do a thing called <clears throat> butterscotching <clears throat> beforehand. That's, <laughs> we've talked about this. this Not one, with me. This is when the girls do the enema before the scene. It's called butterscotching. I think somebody maybe had like a budget enema. <laughs> a two a, syringe. Yeah. The little fleet mobile job, not and the, not the just, big boy door hanger. It was like I got bored. Like I was there so long, I'm like, look, I, you know, I gotta get out of here. Right. I gotta go home and watch the personal touch. <laughs> <laughs> this is not blowing my balls off. I got the guy put me to work. <clears throat> it's the most it, Jewish thing ever. It is interesting that he handed you a styrofoam camera so you wouldn't <laughs> spook people. <laughs> Little view master, <laughs> yeah, like an easy hand, bake camera. Hand cranked. <laughs> He's staring at the Grand Canyon. A sketch pad. <laughs> He's staring at pictures of Marlon Perkins with a boner. <laughs> he handed me a sketch pad and a charcoal pencil. <laughs> yeah, we got a stenographer. <laughs> oh my god! Do they still have? They still have stenographers, right? Oh yeah. Sure. That's that's kind of interesting to me. It's weird. He said changing the subject. Yeah, <laughs> but I, I feel like along with the courtroom sketch artist yeah. it feels like Archaic. a bygone era yeah. just roll the tape and then if we need any of the, the but the, they have to read it back to them in real time I the think court that's sketch the artist to me makes everybody look like the celtics logo yeah so it's like old-timey trunks with red <laughs> yes, cheeks yes yes <laughs> like, eh. 
Same. Yeah, how long is that guy going to be white, the Celtics logo? I mean, it's... Oh, he's a leprechaun. Oh, he's Celtic, no. yeah. Yeah, I know, but in today's age... Well, we're the Notre the... Dame mascot was black, you know, for yeah. a, a, a short period of time. Yeah, yeah, we get to everything eventually. I feel like we should be coming for the they don't like drunken leprechaun. Anymore, Ryan. Sorry. I feel like the Celtics logo is fairly ethnically ambiguous. <clears throat> is it? To me. Uh, that feels pretty white. It could be Irish or Scottish. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> or Welsh. Has a little bit of like Italian in him. Look at the. Oh yeah, but swarthy. Well, nah, we're talking white though. Oh, okay. That's yeah, that's yeah. problematic. <laughs> All right, Jay's going to hang out. We'll do the news in a second. First, I'll tell you about American Hartford Gold. Inflation at a forty-year high since Adam graduated high school. That's the only time the economy was worse than it is now. <laughs> Interest rates skyrocketing. Experts like J.P. Morgan see. CEO Jamie Dimon predict a recession using terms like economic hurricane. Protect your future. Do what I did. Call American Hartford Gold. They'll help protect your savings and retirement by diversifying your portfolio with physical gold and silver. One short phone call and they'll have the physical gold and silver delivered right to your door or inside your IRA or 401k. Highest rated firm in the country. A plus rating from the triple B. Thousands of satisfied customers. Tell them Adam Carolla sent you for up to fifteen hundred bucks free in silver on your first order. Right, Dawson? Call 866-899-2028. That's 866-899-2028. Or text Adam to 998899. That's 866 2028 Or text Adam to 998899. All right, quick break. Come back with the news and Jay right after this. Let's start off with some sad news and breaking for uh, for our purposes. Olivia Newton John has passed away mm. at the age of seventy three. <clears throat> The Grease legend died at her ranch in Southern California Monday morning, surrounded by her friends and her family. Long time battle with breast Jesus cancer. Jesus Christ. First Sean a Grant, now I this. Know, this is a tough day. This is brutal. She was born in England, but she was raised in Melbourne in Australia when she was f- from the time she was 14. Um, and she announced in May 2017 that after 25 years in remission, the disease spread to her lower back. Which you don't hear very often. Um, a couple of things I didn't know about her. Maybe you guys can fill me in. Um, she was born in England in 48 uh, before relocating to Australia. We said that. But she began singing in the late 60s, eventually releasing her first solo album called If Not For You. That was in 1971, featuring the title track originally written by Bob Dylan and recorded if by George not, Harrison. <clears throat> yeah. If not for you. How'd she get that wired in right away? Uh, Great question. Uh, well, it hit it's number a good one. Song. It hit number one in the U.S. Adult Contemporary no Xanadu, chart. But. Thank you. Um, and what's the? Oh God, what's not physical? What's the other one that's so good? Well, little my love. No. Is it Little My Love or Chris? She has some good pop songs. Adam just came out of the closet I like a Murphy bed. I love. <laughs> that was a test that I she, passed. She was a beautiful woman who could really sing as well. Yeah. It's called Little My Love. Oh, magic is what I was thinking of. Oh, right. Got to believe in magic. magic. Don't Nothing let you stand in our way. way. Oh, that is a nice one. Got to believe <laughs> I love that in the banger. Don't let your head ever stray. <laughs> and if I, uh, uh, That's right. A little more love. A little more love is a, is a good pop song. I got to hear it. Oh, you're going to like it. Do we have it? <clears throat> and of course, all the songs from Greece, <clears throat> Hopelessly Devoted, and the one that I want, <clears throat> Summer Nights. And- I Honestly Love You was one of her. Oh, yeah. I Honestly well. Love, love You. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah, I do. Now the time has passed. We can agree that Greece, the movie, sucks. Brian. Oh, Brian. Be Brian. Shut your whore mouth. Sounds like a montage where me and Gina are trying on hats. Yes. <laughs> the Give me the touch. thumbs up, the thumbs down. Dude, are you gay? Yeah, I am. I listen to a song. I don't know. I was 15. I was like, this chick is hot, and this is a good pop song, and she's changing it up a lot. I appreciate you putting me up on game. That was a banger, man. Yeah. Yeah. That was really good. Could be my next karaoke. That would be fantastic. Little my love. Hey, sorry, uh, Hell is for Children by Pat Benatar, but I'm moving on. (laughs) Here's a song by a gay guy. That's right. I'll do backups for you if you do that song. Please. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. What is your go? Is that your go to karaoke? I'll go Hell is for Children. Hell is for Children by Pat Benatar. And if I want to get a lady up there, we do uh, the the one and only Sheriff hit. God damn it. Sheriff is Sheriff. The band Sheriff. Uh-huh. Oh, you'll know it. Huh. You're going to know it, Jay. Okay. 
She knows you probably you've never let me down. Know it too, <laughs> because it really shows my range and my chops. Yeah, you know what I mean. I don't want to get up there and just you know do the bump bump bum, 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 turn around. Uh oh. Yeah, I don't know the commissar. Is it I'm, when I'm with you? Oh yeah, it's got to the be their only what's, hit. What's the one that involves karate kicks? Well, Van Halen one. The thing, <laughs> the thing about Hell is for Children is it starts off oh, nice and slow, nice and slow, but yeah. it breaks. I go full Elvis Brown Belt by the end, and that's where the sweat <laughs> on Chrysalis starts records. flying. Yeah, what's yeah. what's the share song you've requested of All me? All right, it's it's. Uh, oh. Looks like I can almost hear it. Now, I think we could handle this, Gina. Okay. But you'd obviously have to work out. I'm gonna Fuck look. yeah is what I yeah. say. So yeah. I'll kill do Hell is for Chill. L- little My Love now with Olivia Newton-John may bump off Hell is for Chill, but then when I need some help, mm. yeah. I go with Sheriff. That's good. Mm. Go 14 months or so till the next cruise. That's true. Oh, yeah. What's the Cher song you want me to sing? Uh, well, One I mean, cock at a time. You got, you got, a, you got a lot of half-breed, which, no. is, which is awesome. No. No. Uh, Dark Lady. Yes, 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 yes. You do Dark Lady. I'll do Dark Lady. And I'll do the clapping. Right. Okay. Strictly <laughs> adult. Mm-hmm. Strictly X. <laughs> Whip five on your And belt. it's hot. Sorry. It's hot. Can it I is please, hot. Can I please just ask what Colin Quinn would sound like saying? Well, you know, it's no Hulk. You know? <laughs> it's no joke. I hope you have new batteries in your vibrator, you know, because <laughs> you're going to whip five on yourself and do it lubricated. <laughs> what do I know, you know? Five Wait, she didn't get a boob reduction to get down to a G cup. That's <laughs> nice. Gina. Pretty much, yeah. She's never been underwater. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the old shipwreck, the Mesopotamia. We all swimming towards Gina Grant. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, one more. Okay, well. We're How's your gonna... mashup going, Dawson? Uh, it's going well. It needs a little more time. We'll skip down because a lot of shit happened over the weekend. We'll get to it, though. Let's talk about Kim Kardashian and Pete Davidson. They have reportedly... Ended things. God. According to an insider, their age difference was one of the main reasons. Mm. A source says that Pete's 28, Kim's 41. They're very different lives. And they said Pete is totally spontaneous and impulsive. She was exhausted after dealing with him. She has four kids. She she has a different kind of life. She needs to focus on other things. Um, in the end, yeah, Kim was just very, very tired. Um, the couple started dating in November, a month after Kim appeared with Pete on Saturday Night Live. Kanye has weighed in. Mm. In a very sort of a, a picture tells a thousand words type of way, he only has one thing currently on his Instagram page, and this is it. Go ahead and put it up. It's a fake newspaper that says Skeet Davidson dead at age 28. There's a lot going on there. Yeah. It's weird to obsess I, like that, he does. What's it say under that? I bet that's... <laughs> who is the biggest, Here's a big question. I'll pose it to Brian first. We'll get to Jay. On one hand, these two have broken up fine. On another hand, he's going to move on to a new woman that's going to very. I'm going to be livid when I find out who he's banging sure. next. Yes. And who would really like? You know, who's the chick who's playing Barbie now in the new feature? Uh, Margot, Margot Robbie. Robbie. He's going to go on to Margot Robbie. He's going to do it, and then we're going to go. What the fuck? What? I'm, I'm going to go nuts. It will be someone of Margot Robbie's stature. She's Australian. She's cool. She wants stuff uh, to do with Sure, her. sure. We could have yeah. said that about Beck and Sale. She's English. Okay. Yes, I would have said no. She's too smart for that. She's mm-hmm. never. Stephen Dyer is English. No. Yes. Pam Greer. <laughs> I would sign Nina off Hartley. on that. I'd sign yeah. on that. I, I I don't know what her status mm-hmm. is. I don't know what the Margot Robbie status. I don't know, but be prepared. Okay. It'll probably be someone like Dua Lipa or something. Yeah. Someone kind of edgy and rocky. I just hope it's not someone that's going to upset me. Yeah. Well, Dua Lipa's so pretty glad fucking I'm not hot. single. Jeez. It's so much this effort. This could be devastating. So much to effort me. out there trying to. I don't meet care if I was married to 15 women and living in Utah. I'm still pissed <laughs> when that guy's scrawny, tatted ass goes balls deep mm-hmm. in his next 10. It yeah. bothers me. Why? Because. I never really thought about it. <laughs> Who cares? You ask all the tough questions. Yeah. Now, listen. Yeah. You neither. You, yeah. I want you to be either matinee idol good looks or comedic genius. Not the least funny guy on SNL. That's and I and it angers me because I I studied it in high school, which is 
All you got to do is bag one hottie and the rest just fall like dominoes. <laughs> That's what's going on. Yeah. They don't like him. They go good enough of Kim Kardashian. Now he's got the springboard of Kim Kardashian. He's going to take yeah. whoever he wants. Who's better looking, Kanye or Pete Davidson? Because mm. Kanye looks like he has the mumps all the time. <laughs> mm, that's right. He always looks no. like he's storing like... Yeah, mm. nuts for the winner. Yeah. Well, Kanye, while well, not in my music genre, you still could label him a genius. Sure. Pete, I do not. Can you not label him a genius? One could. He, he One could. Critically. He rhymes. I, it's, not, it's not my thing. I'm actually joking. I love I've Kanye. I've listened to enough of it because my daughter and I have driven around enough where you go, okay, I, I get it. Yeah, then I, you I get like into it's like clothing lines and stuff like that or whatever. You Maybe owe, it's P.T. Barnum. You owe Anna Gary Smith Tour. a Pete huge. Pete Davidson, Anna yes. Tour. Yeah. You owe Gary Smith a huge apology from I years know. ago. I was a hater. <laughs> I don't love him now, but I, I, get, I get what it is. I, I get why the kids and Gary. Gary, the and pride, Gary. Of, the, the pride like of Torrance. Him. Look at him. Hi, Gary. The pride of Torrance. Yeah. yeah. All right. So we'll see who he's with. Yeah. Only a matter of time. I, look, Pete, could you just date a hostess from Wom Poppers who's attractive? <laughs> Womp poppers. Uh, just go find a nice yeah. hot twenty three year old who's a fucking civilian and yeah. just date her. Yeah. There, I, I could go over to Pierce Junior College over there at the other end of the valley. I could round up fifty eight pluses mm-hmm. that would be more than happy to do whatever you wanted. But no. Yeah. You're going with some it's going Margot Robbie. Pierce Junior College, home of Coco Crisp. Oh really? Former major league center fielder. Right. All right. Yeah. All right. Let's bring it Put home, that in Gina. your pipe and smoke it. <laughs> you got it. I'm Gina right. Grad, and that's the news. Oh. I want to be with young men. Gina, Gina That was the news with Gina Grad. All right, Dawson, it's your time to shine. Gina, I just found your new uh, cowboy rock aerobics song. Or Country <laughs> Heat? Whatever you're Yeah, I liked it. Fucking love that song. I did song. Country Heat before I got here. What year is that? 79? I'm trying to think of what year that Olivia Newton-John song is from. Anyway. Make you pull your wang-wang. She was beautiful and she could sing, too. Why does he say wang-wang after the the litany of uh, dirty words? (laughs) Who wants to come on their television? I also... (laughs) I also love it when a guy, I love it when guys do this thing where they go, you're going to pull out that hog, you're going to stuff it up or poop shoot and come all over back bukkake style. And then later on, they say something like, I don't give a damn. Oh, pardon my French. <laughs> I don't mean to cross yeah. the line yeah. here, but where you need to pull, pull your hog out and get, get in front of your grandchildren. It's like, I'm, yes, you are. Stop. I don't mean to. Yeah. Pardon my French. You just talked about coming on the TV set for 20 uh, minutes. And I don't mean to work blue. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Bald. Uh, oh ni- 1978. Yeah. Uh, that song little... predates the personal touch. Oh, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, wow. well Dawson, you got some homework. Other than prefab burritos. Dawson, you know what you are? You're the MVP of the show today. That's yeah. right. Always Fuck pulls it, it out. MVP. Now he's pointing back at you. you. Oh, I know, he's right. Yeah. All right, let me hit uh, Jordan. Do we go out, Gina? Yes. Uh, let me hit Jordan Harbinger's show. A different kind of sponsor for this episode, the Jordan Harbinger show. Uh, if you're a fan of fascinating podcasts with interesting people, you should definitely check it out. There's an episode for everyone. No matter what you're into, Jordan will talk to uh, Scott Adams about persuasion in a world where facts don't matter. Or you can go inside the dark world of wildlife trafficking. Jordan's been on the show, and we've been on his show, and he's done Drew's show, and good dude, speaks a bunch of languages, has a lot of insight. You always find something useful to apply to your own life, like a routine changes to boost productivity. Slight mindset tweaks. And change how you see the world. We enjoy the show, and you will too. Search it out. The Jordan Harbinger Show. That's H A R B as in boy, I N as in Nancy, G E R. At Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you listen to podcasts, it is The Jordan Harbinger Show. All right. Linda Hamilton, Resident Alien, is the name of her show. You can check that out on Sci Fi. And then there's Jay Moore. Yeah, it's going to be in Huntsville, Alabama, coming up September 9th through the 11th, and then September 23rd and 24th, Sacramento, California, the punchline. Go check out his live dates at jmore.com if you want to laugh. I'm going to be in Salt Lake City at Wise Guys Comedy Club coming up August 
26th and 27th, doing some live pods there and some live stand-up. And until next time, Santa Pro for Linda Hamilton and Jay Moore and Gina Grad and Bull Brian say it. Mahalo. Hello, friends. Here we are. Personal Touch Grand Premiere at Grand... <laughs> At Grumman's Chinese Theater. Oh, and here comes the hedgehog. Here comes Ron Jeremy. <laughs> Don't give him a countdown. He'll make a mess on the sidewalk. <laughs> Shana Grant, real life pornographic actress. Just got done with Robert Mitchum. <laughs> you may 